Hey there guys, IO Clever here. I thought I'd make a vlog today to talk about the epic time that me and the girlfriend had at the Manchester Play Expo coming up to three weeks ago now, so better late than never. It was a great place, it was we had a fantastic time as well. So yeah. Um now the whole place was huge, it was a massive warehouse, so I don't even know where to start really. Um they had a pinball, they had like a whole pinball section going off at the back there's so many things going off but um we went to the one of the pinballs to start with thinking that as people came in they probably wouldn't go to the back of the arena first um, but that was packed the pinball place was cool and they had loads and loads and loads of different machines and um i've never seen so many pinball machines in one place and i i didn't realize how much variety a pinball machine could have i thought my my experience with pinball machines was was that um that game you could get on um, was it windows xp there was that pinball game or was it 98 i think it was windows xp that was pretty much most of my experience with pinball machines but oh my god there was so many different pinball machines there's like so many different themes we saw james bond themes uh, there was a Super Mario Brothers theme that was pretty cool. There was like an X-Files theme as well. That was epic. And then not only did they have the different themes, but the whole interior of the machine had like so much different things going off. Like some of them had crazy wheels and some of them had like big runways and stuff like that. And there was an, actually an objective to complete. A spe like in the James Bond one, you had to destroy this this uh, missile silo or something like that which i never realized you could do that in pinball machines i just thought it was you know hit the paddles back the ball you know get the points and that was it um there was one machine that actually instead of just being like on the front of the machine it went up the back as well they had like a little ball lift for it and then it fell down and you had little paddles up there as well that was that was incredible um so i was just blown away by that that was cool so after that we went pretty much next door to it and it was like an arcade games like really retro arcade games that was really cool um, one of the games I, I really wanted to play was dig dug which was a, a game from my childhood i played dig dug quite a lot and it was there strangely enough so we played that for quite a bit um there was a good number of people there as well i was thinking it wasn't like there was queues for every single game, but then every single arcade had had someone there. So if you wanted to wait for a particular game, you know, you just stand behind them for five minutes and then you can go on the game. So it wasn't like there was mad queues for every single game. Um, or if you was done with that game, just walk away and then as you're walking around, you're probably going to find another game as well. So that was cool. Um, Next, they had loads and loads of retro games, like console games. They had, like, from one end of the warehouse right to the other end was just a big, long table, and the whole thing was just covered in, in retro console games. I'm talking, like, back to the PS1s. There was PS2s and 3s, of course. There was uh, Dreamcasts and Wiis and the Sega Saturn I saw as well. They had a Famicom as well that we were playing and we played some Super Mario Brothers on that that my girlfriend seemed to love. She was actually actually a lot better than me, but don't let her know that, that she was better than me at Super Mario Bros. Um, and then they had like a, a cool thing they did, which I thought was quite nice, is they had um, like one particular genre of game through the ages. And the one we played was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And there was like four different consoles there, each playing different versions of a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game, which I thought was a really good idea. There was another one as well, which I, I, I'm kicking myself because I can't remember what it was, but that was cool. There was also a, an area dedicated for LAN games as well, where you could play things like Red Alert 2 and, and similar games like that, which work really well when you're playing them in LAN. Um, Unreal Tournament as well was that. Speaking of tournaments, they did have loads of little tournaments going off all over the place where you could win stuff. I didn't enter into any of them because I thought, there's no way I'm going to win. <clears throat> Excuse me, but that, that seemed cool as well. Loads of little prizes you can win for, for the tournaments. Um, there was also loads of indie games as well. That was a nice thing to see, like a, a nice area dedicated to indie games showing off their games. So I was played. I played one that was Fight for Emore, and there was a big queue for that because it was an Oculus Rift game. And I've never played a game using the Oculus Rift, so that was epic. That was really cool. It was it was a bit um, disorientating, really, actually looking around and 
you know, the game moves with you. It was cool, though. I think one of the cool things as well is the devs were just more than happy. They, the indie game devs were more than happy to tell you about their game, tell you where you could find out in more information and, and give you little hints and tips as well while you're playing the game. So that was, that was awesome. So along with the indie games, there was loads and loads of big titles as well, loads of new releases. They had rows and rows and rows of PS4 games. Strangely enough, um, I didn't really see any Xbox Ones. I I saw one Xbox One, which is one of the the indie game devs had that to play his game. Um, But apart from that, it was PS4 hype everywhere. They had this this little area as well that was over 18s only, no admittance and stuff like that. And we were like, oh, what's this? Let's go and check that out. And they had Broforce there, which was a cool game, actually. I've played Broforce before. My girlfriend loved it. She absolutely loved Broforce. It's come a really long way since I last played it, so I think I might have to buy that. I might have to pick that game up because that was really, really fun to play. Maybe we'll even do some on the channel. Me and me and Laura on here playing some Broforce. What do you think to that? Let me know. So yeah, speaking of big titles, one of the big games they had there was Dark Souls. They had this huge area for Dark Souls, uh, a big queue as well. You got 15 minutes of game time and, you know, it was like a 25 minute, half an hour queue time for it. But that's cool. It was Dark Souls 3, by the way, I should, <laughs> should mention that, which hasn't been released as of yet. So that was cool that we got a little hands on, a little f- a first peek. I think it was the first time... It's been like publicly available in the UK. So that was a nice little treat for us as well. Um, My girlfriend filmed me a little bit playing Dark Souls. What can I say about it? I'd love to do a little little 30 second review. But I never played Dark Souls 1 or Dark Souls 2. I know it was hard. It was definitely hard. But I expected that. Um, I think one of the interesting things to note though. The only thing I could take away from it is that it because it was on PS4, I was a little bit concerned with the load times. Like while I was queuing, I was thinking, oh, the load times are going to be atrocious. Now I know this is going on a little bit off topic, but one of the reasons I bought The Witcher 3 was someone told me you can... If you want an objective, you can get that objective, but you're going to die a lot of times while you're going for it you know what I mean so if you want it go and do it find out your opponent's tactics and and kind of use it against him it might be the 10th time you've done it and you've died nine times up to there but eventually you'll do it and you'll feel really good for it so that's why I bought the Witcher 3 it turns out that every time you die I mean you could be in a battle for 20 seconds and die and then the load time is oh my god like 60 seconds and carry on that for 10 times you're wasting your day you know what I mean so I was really concerned about that with Dark Souls. Like, that's a game where you die loads and loads and loads. But I was pleasantly surprised because the, the load times were instant. You know what I mean? They were really, really quick. Um, so that's all I can say about Dark Souls. That, it, was a really, it was really cool. The load times were instant, on point with that. Um, which could have been a real bad point on consoles. Now, as all of this is going off, as it's all happening around us, there's cosplay everywhere. Like, cosplay was a big part of the the whole Play Expo thing. Um, They had a cosplay stage too. They had, like, little cosplay competitions as well, who had the best outfit and stuff like that. Um, But I, I missed most of it. I mean, it's not really my thing. And there was just so much other stuff to do as well. Like, there was so much going on. Um, I did take this one picture, though. Look at these guys from Payday. They were more than happy to, like, you know, put the gloves on and get the guns out and pose for this picture. So hats off to those guys. Really good, uh, really good sports there. Finally, there was some really cool shops there. I mean, like, quite a lot of that place was shops. And they were selling all sorts of things from these cool little buttons, these, like, little badges and things. Uh, there was loads of little interesting trinkets you could pick up as well. And then... Wow, there was so many, so many different console games. I'm talking every th- single console you can imagine. Uh, there were games there available. Um, and one of the games I really wanted was Tombi. Like the original PlayStation 1 Tombi game. Um, which I've been after for a very long time. And I found it. Pretty cool. I, I found it. And look at this. £130. Wow, uh, safe to say I didn't get that. Um, it would have been cheaper to buy a PS3 and then go onto the PlayStation 1 Classics thing and buy Tomba. 
for um, for like six or seven pounds, which which is exactly what I did instead of buying the game. So I think that moves us pretty much onto pickups. So let me show you the pickups that I got. There's there's some really cool stuff here. So one of the first things we did when we got there is play a little indie game called Rocks. And as we were walking off, we picked up um, some badges. They had a little bowl full of badges. I'll do a little close-up of this for you. And as we was rooting through this bowl of badges, the guy came up to us and said, Hey, you like free stuff, do you? Here's some posters. So <laughs> we picked up a few, a few posters. Uh, a nice little one here. Now, this wasn't actually the game we played. Uh, oh, here it is. Look. Rocks. Pretty cool looking poster. Pretty nice design, actually. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to put it up, but why not? Free stuff. Can't complain. Uh, yeah, we played Rocks. Not this game, which is pan-dimensional Conga Combat. <laughs> I admit, I haven't treated very well, actually. It's a bit folded. But a nice big one. A nice pan-dimensional Conga Combat. That's a quite a unique name, really. Which is strange, because the other game, Rocks... Maybe not so unique. Can't complain though. Free stuff. Nice little cute little badges as well. So nice. Right, I've got the I've got my bag of stuff here. Let's have a look through this. Um, screw it. This is on top. We'll start with this. This is a Dark Souls three T shirt that I bought for three pounds. Believe it or not, this was three quid. What's that like? Five American dollars. Pretty damn cheap, really, for a T shirt. Um, but strangely enough, they'd sold out of these as well. But basically, the whole idea was you give them your name and your email address and and you're pre-ordering Dark Souls 3, but you're under no obligation to pre-order the game. All I've done is give them my name and my email address. So what are they going to do? But um, if you get if you paid them £3 as well, you could get the shirt as well. So not so bad. Um, I think the three pounds went towards the pre-order as well, so can't complain about that really. Um, they'd actually sold out of my size, which is XL, um, and the guy says, "Well, give me your address and I'll send it up to you." So I got it free, post and package delivered as well. So you can't complain about that one bit. Oh yes, I was really chuffed with this. Actually, I got quite a lot of semi bargains. I mean, the whole place was quite expensive. As you can see from that uh, that Tombi game for 130 quid, quite expensive. But I got these. Uh, I'm a big fan of Dragon Ball Z, and I picked up these Dragon Ball Z crystal balls. Look how cool that is! What do you think to that? Um, and what were they selling these for? Were these five pounds each? Something like that, or yeah, five pound each, or three for a tenner. Something like that. Or you could pick up one of these nice boxes for 25 quid. And I said to this guy, can you do it for 20? I think 25 quid maybe is a little bit too much for these. The quality is nice. It's not perfect though. Um, and it's not... These aren't glass. That sounded like glass actually, but it's not glass. Um, so yeah, 20 quid instead of 25 quid. Can't complain about that. And it's in a very nice fancy box as well. So that's pretty cool. What else do we have in the bag of loot here? Oh, this was one of the first things I bought, actually. It's a little Star Trek wallet. Um, and it came in, what was it? It was the blue or the red or like this, the yellow. And the, the red one actually inside says, it's got like engraved, he's dead, Jim. <laughs> um, but this is the captain's one. This is the commander's one. So I picked up this one. Um, and this is it's not for me it's for a friend of mine who's a big trekkie fan so uh, perfect in time for christmas sorted the guy wanted 15 quid for this i said to him can you can you do it for 12 no arguments we sorted it we shook hands at 12 so sorted uh what else oh there were some badges as well picked up some badges i can't remember what these were I, i'm thinking four for three quid Bit of a rip-off, but the the nice, cute little things. Um, I wanted a few little mementos. So, <laughs> the first one is a Cool Story Bro badge. I showed this at the start, I think, in the video. Um, a second one is Hug Dealer. My girlfriend chose these out for me. Um, hug Dealer. <laughs> I like giving hugs, apparently. So, uh, that's pretty relevant as well. Um, there's this. Ever the number one fan of my girlfriend. <laughs> You suck 
instead of obviously YouTube. That's quite cute. Um, and then I picked this one out. It's like a Dragon Ball Z logo. It's like the patch that they have on the back, I think. I think it could be slightly wrong and I wouldn't know. But yeah, they're cool little badges. Um, anyway, uh, four for three pounds, I think that's what they were. Whatever, whatever, not too bad. Okay, yeah, I also picked up this uh, Nintendo... Well, Super Nintendo. I was going to say Nintendo 64. It's the Super Nintendo Star Wing. And I I don't think this is the one that everyone's crazy about. There's like a Star Fox game that everyone's crazy about. It's the one with the fox and the, uh, the rabbit and the toad and stuff. What's the other guy? Uh, like an eagle or whatever he is. Like that bird thing. I don't think this is the one that's really, really popular. But it was pretty cheap. I think this was £5. So I'm not going to complain. It looks like a pretty good condition. I've not had ch- uh, not a chance to test it out yet, but whatever. That's cool. Um, now I also picked up a PS3 for my girlfriend. I mentioned earlier that I picked. I got a PS3. Um, there was a guy that was selling like signed autographs from from famous people, from celebrities, basically, and he'd go go around, get them to sign something, and then he'd, like, take a selfie with them, so you could kind of prove it was, um, you know, prove the authenticity of it, um, but he said because it was a games thing, he was bringing this PlayStation 3 along that he wanted to get rid of, and uh, he wanted £50 for it, and I was thinking, that's pretty good, actually, £50 for a PlayStation 3, he didn't really know much about it, though, he didn't know what size... Uh, console it was it was a fat one um it's at my girlfriend's house i wish i could show it you i've i took a selfie with it a a three megapixel selfie with the front of my phone so there you go look at that (laughs) it turns out it's a 40 megabyte a 40 gigabyte even oh my god imagine if it was 40 megabytes yeah it was 40 gigabyte hard drive um so i said to the guy can you do it for 45 pounds and he said yeah so deal sorted so along with that we also picked up a few games here uh laura's got some at her house i can't quite remember what she got i think it was like the grand theft auto i picked a few out for her saints row why not and then dragon age origins as well these they weren't incredibly cheap to be honest they were they were fairly priced you know what i mean it wasn't like a super bargain or anything like that um oh yeah as well Okay, I was going to say we picked up some other games, but these are we went to game and actually got a lot better of a bargain from game that we than we did there. So that's it. That's all the pickups. I spent a lot of money, but I think it's worth it. Lots of cool stuff, lots of little trinkets and stuff like that. I'm definitely thinking about going next year as well because that was a blast. Um, oh, finally, we saw some YouTubers as well. And uh, I've got a little book that I'm trying to get YouTubers to sign. I wish I'd have got a selfie with them just to kind of, uh, once again, like I mentioned, uh, prove the authenticity of, of the signatures. But they all signed it for me. So um, over the moon with that. Another page in the YouTuber autograph book. So sorted. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this, guys. And... Maybe I'll uh, we'll do it again next year.